What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another part of our multi-part series for new traders. So what we're going to cover today is mirror trading. What is it and why you shouldn't do it? All right, guys, so let's jump right on into it. Mirror trading. Mirror trading is when you're in one of those chat rooms like we covered in the last one and the uh, guru tells you uh, I'm buying at 220 and they buy and then you buy and then they tell you uh, I'm selling and it's like 230 and then you go to sell. But when you look at your level two, for those of you that don't know, this is your level two. When you look at your level two, you don't see 230 on the ask or on the bid because you're already like at 215. You're like, crap. What do I do now? That's mirror trading. You can't mirror trade because it doesn't work. Unless that stock kept pushing, you were you were just not going to be able to get out where they got out. And that's just being lucky and getting lucky, honestly. Mirror trading is something that's not... It's frowned upon. You don't do it because it doesn't work. You can't mirror trade. You can't mirror trade anybody because it's just... It's too hard. You have to have experience. You have to know what you're looking and what you're getting into. Okay. Today I was in the chat that I'm in and another trader bought VTVT. I looked at the chart. I liked what I saw. So I bought VTVT. I made my own trade plan and you can see here, I bought a thousand shares of VTVT at $3 and 25 cents. I wanted to sell this at $3 and 50 cents. And I'll show you why in a second. I just got to get my chart pulled up. I ended up selling the, selling it at 332. But why? Why did I sell at 332? Nobody else that I know of sold it there in that area. I did. Now, let me see if I can bring up my chart here for you. And I'll show you why I did what I did. So on VTVT, this is what, this is what we had. I'm going to show you a 15-minute chart just because it's going to be easier for you to see. So I had here VTVT. This was yesterday's highs. You can see right here at 335, 340 area. And then this morning we had resistance there. As you can see, it wouldn't break through that area. It just wouldn't. It had a high of, what's this candle? 336. I sold at 332. I was in that you know, I was in the trade in this area when I saw it hit 336 and it didn't immediately squeeze to 340 and break there and go to 350. I sold as it was coming back down because I was able to recognize that there was a lot of resistance up there. Shorts weren't covering. They weren't afraid. And it just simply wasn't going to work. Let me see if I can get you uh, a three minute version of this, which is the chart I was actually, you know, trading with. Here we go. OK, so. Once we had this action here and the volume kind of like halted, you see where the volume bar didn't continue breaking on up. The more we're breaking down resistance, the higher I expect this volume to be as buyers are stepping in and as shorts are covering. That's the recipe for knowing this stock is going to continue moving. When that volume didn't continue moving and we started coming back down, we couldn't break down this line. I sold out of my position. Look what happened in the very next candle. If you're mirror trading and you don't know what you're doing, obviously, I wasn't mirror trading. I traded my own plan. Then you're going to get dumped on. You're going to get caught in this candle. You're going to get caught in that candle and it's going to get nasty because chances are if you're mirror trading and somebody told you to buy this at 320, you didn't probably get in until 330, more than likely. And that's already helped you in the top. Then you're in this candle getting crapped on. And by no means was this a pump and dump because the stock did, you know, end up testing again the area. It ends up failing again now here at 2.38 p.m. But the point is you have to have your own plan. You can't just trade what other people are doing. You have to look at multiple things. Check this out. Check this, this stock out. Watch this. This is another one that I was not involved in. I, I did not trade this stock, but as I was studying the charts, I I realized, you see how this stock right here, we have this resistance, I think about 170. This was pre-market. The stock opens up, sells off, 
and it just can't get through. It just can't get through. This is why you don't, you know, buy mirror trading alerts. Like you don't mirror trade. You don't follow blind alerts because look at this. I was actually watching this stock yesterday. I remember it now when I see this candle, we had this immediate red to green move, but then a complete fail and fade. You have to know what's going on. You have to be able to read charts, be able to know what resistance is, be able to look at volume. You can't just buy things because somebody else told you and not bother to learn how to trade because you have to look at all these things. I have my, my platform up here because I want to show you uh, here that this stock isn't moving so we can see it really well. We're going to look at the level two. See, so you have your level two here and I'm hoping you can see this well. Let me move it up here maybe. You can see here your buyers and your sellers and this is what this order is selling for that's uh i'm i'm saying i'm sorry offering to buy at or dollar 78 they want 364 shares and this guy's over here at a dollar 80 wanting to sell 200 shares but when you're in a stock and you're seeing the volume is drying up and maybe you see some big sellers here on the ask meaning you have a guy selling you know at a dollar 80 20,000 shares and then another guy here at a dollar 81 with 30,000 shares you know there's 50,000 shares on that ask that need to get bought up in order for the stock to keep moving you have to be able to read those things and you have to be able to look at your tape here and, and is it all red is it all green you look at your volume bars these are things you have to really look into you can't just mirror trade you have to be able to learn to trade take somebody's alert or somebody's idea and make it your own because there's no way in the world, especially if you're following a momentum trader, that you're going to be able to keep up with them. It's impossible. You're just going to get crapped on because every time they buy, by the time they alert you, the stock's already moved up a few cents. And if you jump in there and then they start selling, you're going to get you're going to just get crapped on. The stock's going to go from 230 all the way down to 205 and you're going to be left holding that bag, not knowing whether to cut your loss there or buy more god forbid you average down on a losing trade you have to learn to trade guys you can't rely on mirror trading in those chat rooms that's garbage you're never going to learn to trade that way you're never going to be successful and don't blame anybody else but yourself i've seen people in chat rooms blame everybody else you got to blame yourself on that you know if the stock is approaching high a day like the stock i was in there that vtvt and that volume isn't increasing you got to think to yourself, it's probably not going to break down and don't get caught holding that bag. This is a really short video because the gist of it is very simple. Don't mirror trade. It doesn't work. Learn to trade for yourself. Be responsible for your own trades and trade your trading plan according to your risk. Always set a risk. Don't let anybody tell you, oh, you need to buy a thousand shares of a stock in order to be, uh, you know, make money. That's bull crap. That is total garbage. You got to buy the amount of shares that uh, in your play that will go within your risk. If you are only willing to risk $50 on a stock and that stock is, you know, two bucks, then you know that if you're, when you look at your chart, that if your risk is, I don't know, 20 cents down, then you're only able to buy uh, just about 250 shares where your risk is going to be 50 bucks. Don't let somebody else come and tell you that, oh no, you got to buy a thousand shares because now all of a sudden your risk is no longer 50 bucks. It's $200 because that 20 cents on a thousand shares is 200 bucks and make sure your risk reward is there. Make sure that you're risking, let's say that 20 cents for the chance to make 30 cents minimum, 40 cents ideally, 50 cents perfect. So you want to make sure your risk reward is there. You want to learn to trade. And maybe we'll do some follow-up videos to this series where we go over proper risk reward. All right. Well, until the next one, guys, I hope you're having a great day and you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought and remember to hit that subscribe button.